writing the 22nd book. And a lot of his writings deal with inspiration of, of Christ's life and how we can apply that to our lives and, and kind of challenge us. And then some of the books he has written are just lighthearted, fun reading books about people that he has met over his years of ministry and over his life. And starting tonight, that's what we're going to be looking at. Is we're going to be looking at some of these people that Philip Gully has met. Some of these people who have made an impact on his life. I'm sure that as you've lived your lives, you know that there are certain people who just make an impact in your life and your life, and they kind of leave an imprint of, of themselves in your life, and, and you never forget them. You just kind of remember them no matter what, and, and things happen in life, and it brings back memories of them, and, and that they just make an impact. And that's some of the people we're going to be looking at in the life of Philip Gully. And, and as I said before, what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of, I'm going to share a story and then we're going to look at the scripture, then we're going to apply it to our lives. So you know, I hope you enjoy these stories. I hope you kind of help uh, as we do this. It'll, I hope it'll help us to observe people more. You know, sometimes we go through life and we really don't observe people the way that we should. We just kind of see people and we go past people and and we don't really recognize people for who they are. And I hope this will help us to observe people just a little bit more. And I, I love stories. I love to hear people's stories. And so uh, this kind of goes with my passion and, and, and what I like to do. And so I hope you'll enjoy these next series. And tonight, we, we begin with the story of a man named Dr. Gibbs. When Philip met Dr. Gibbs, he met him as a child. He met Dr. Gibbs was an older man. He was a doctor. And he didn't really look like a doctor all that much, or at least he didn't look the way a doctor should look, according to for example, when he would meet Dr. Gibbs, whenever he would see him during the day, Dr. Gibbs would be wearing a pair of old denim coveralls. And he would also be wearing a straw hat. Now, I think you know what kind of straw hat I'm talking about because it's a straw hat, but it has one of those green visors on the front of the hat that's supposed to keep the sun out of your face and supposed to keep you a little cooler, which it never really does. But Philip met Dr. Gibbs, and, and each day he would see Dr. Gibbs, and Dr. Gibbs was out in his yard working. Now, Dr. Gibbs lived on a 10-acre land. And one of the things that was Dr. Gibbs' goal in life was to make that 10 acres of forest, and he planted a bunch, a bunch of trees in that yard and on his property to try to make a forest out of that area. Well, Dr. Gibbs had a little bit of a different philosophy when it came to growing trees that he planted. He sort of used the no pain, no gain philosophy of growing and planting trees. For example, he never watered a tree. And Philip couldn't understand this, and so he went to him and said, Dr. Gibbs, why do you never water the trees? And Dr. Gibbs said, well, if you water the trees, it makes them sissy. He said, if you water trees, they'll expect you to do everything for them. And he said, plus, if you water the trees, their roots don't have to reach down very far to get the water. But if you do not water the trees, their roots have to go way down deep to find a source of water. And as those roots go way down deep, the tree becomes strong. But said, if you water the trees, what will happen is every generation after that tree will get weaker and weaker and weaker. And I want a strong generation of trees. So he never watered the tree. Instead, what he would do is he would get up every morning and he would take a rolled up piece of newspaper and he would hit the trees. I mean, he would slap them and beat them and hit them. And, and Philip surely didn't understand this. It went against all of his conventional wisdom of why would you beat a tree? And so he went out to Dr. Gibbs and he said, Dr. Gibbs, why do you beat the trees? You don't water them. Why do you beat them? And he said, so I can get the tree's attention and help it grow. He said, you see, I do this to weed out all the weak trees and to make the trees strong. 25 years later, after Dr. Gibbs had passed away, Philip looked back at his life and, and he realized that he had planted some trees in his yard. Philip did. Every day he went out and he watered those trees. He prayed over the trees. He talked to the trees. 
He coddled the trees. He tried to help them grow as much as possible. And he said, you know what happened to those trees? He said, those trees depended on me for everything. He said, those were the weakest, sissiest trees I've ever planted in my life. They never got strong. He said, I, I went back at Dr. Gibbs' trees, and, and they are now super strong trees. I mean, these are trees that probably wake up in the morning and beat their chest and drink black coffee. He said, but not my trees. The least little breeze, my trees bend over and want to come in the house and want me to take care of them. And he said, I can almost understand that Dr. Gibbs has a little bit of advantage. His trees have an advantage over mine because my trees are not tough and they're not strong and they depend on me for everything. Well, as Philip walked into his house one night, he went into his boys' bedroom where they were sleeping, young boys, and, and he began to pray over them. And after he finished his prayer, he realized that for so many years he had been praying over his boys when they would go to bed, and he would pray that their life would be easy, that they would never experience pain, that they would never know what it meant to hurt, that they would not know what it meant to have people bully on to call them names. He said, I just wanted what was so easy for my children. I wanted them to have an easy life. And he said, as I reflect back on Dr. Gibbs and his trees, I kind of wonder if I didn't need to change my prayer. So he said he changed his prayer. And at night when he went in his room, the kids' rooms, he didn't pray that, that they would have life easy. Instead, he prayed that his children would have roots that went way down deep and made them strong and made them withstand and help them withstand the storms of life and, and the things that people do to them and the things that people say to them, that they would be strong people and be able to handle that. Phil said, you see, we, we oftentimes, we want life to be easy. We don't want pain, we don't want hurting, but as we think about it, that's part of life. It's kind of unrealistic to think that we're not going to hurt and we're not going to deal with heartache and we're not going to deal with pain. So instead of praying that we're praying that that will not happen, let's pray that, that God will allow us to grow roots that are so deep that we can stay strong. Even in the toughest storms of life, It's a story that he tried to teach his children. And it's a story that he learned from a man by the name of Dr. Gibbs. You see, I think Paul had a type of theory that Dr. Gibbs had. In our passage of Scripture, our verse of Scripture for tonight, we find it in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 10. This is what Paul says about suffering. Paul says, that is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. You see, I think Paul understood what it meant to be tough in times of storms and to be tough when the going gets tough. Not to kind of bow down to everything that happens, but, but to be strong and to have our roots deep so that it makes us even tougher. Now if you were to go back and look in chapter 12 of, of this book, 2 Corinthians, you would see where Paul talked about the thorn in his flesh. And we really never know what that thorn is. The only thing we know is there was a thorn in his flesh that really, really bothered him. And it seemed like when things were going good, this would always pop up. It would always come back to give him pain. It would always come back to give him problems. It would always come back to maybe change his thought or his day or you know how it is. I mean, there's things that happen in our lives and and our day is going good and somebody says something, somebody does something, and all of a sudden our good day can be switched to a 
Today we wish we could just go back to bed in a heartbeat. Whether it's work or whether it's family or or anything. I mean, it's just, there's times when, when things happen. Maybe it's news we receive. But there's things that happen that can change our whole day. Make it just spin out of control. And for Paul, that was a thorn in his flesh. Whatever this thorn in his flesh may be. Now we know it bothered Paul because Paul said in, in the scripture, he says that he told God three times to take away the thorn in his flesh. To get rid of it. So it wouldn't bother him. To get rid of it so it wouldn't hurt him. But instead of God taking it away, God told him this. My grace is sufficient. You see, Paul, it's not as important to take away this thorn in your flesh as it is to understand that when that thorn comes up, you can depend on me. You see, that's what's important. That's what is meant by our roots going way down deep. It's because the deeper our roots go, the more we're entrenched in God. And the more we're entrenched in God, when those thorns in our flesh pop up, we don't really pray that God will take it away. Instead, we just pray that God will help us get it. That's what Philip Gully wanted for his children. And that's what God wanted for Paul. God wanted Paul to understand the thorn in your flesh is always going to be there. And when the thorn in your flesh is always there, I'm going to be there as well. That's a great lesson for us to learn is that, you know, we do sometimes, we do pray that you know, God would help the day go without any trouble and any heartache, any pain. That's a good prayer. But realistically, there's going to be times of pain in life. And so why not pray that God would help us to grow roots that can depend on Him and, and can help us get through those painful and hurtful times. You see, God didn't want Paul to come to conceive. He didn't want him to become too arrogant. And so those thorns would come up. And he would have to depend on God to help him get through the times of hurry. You see, it's for this reason that Paul says in our verse for tonight, that is why. Because I know that for a fact, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that no matter what happens in life, no matter what thorns come my way, God will always be with me. And I know for a fact that my roots have gone so deep with God that I can depend on Him to be there. That's important for us is to understand that we can depend on God to be with us through the storms of life. And that's what Paul realized. And Paul says, that is why. Because I understand that God will be there with me. I understand He'll take care of me. I understand He will walk with me in that journey. And it's for that reason that I delight. Now that delight is a tricky word because it almost sounds like Paul has fun in these things. It's like he's eating homemade ice cream, correct? We delight in our homemade ice cream. But that's not what Paul says. What Paul is saying basically is, I'm content when these things happen. I'm at peace when these things happen. So if we want to change it to I'm content in weaknesses. We've all experienced weaknesses in life. I mean, we all know what makes us weak. We all know when we're tired and weary and worn and just don't know if we can make it anymore. It's not as much a physical tired as a mental tired and emotionally tired. That's when we're weak. And insults. Anybody here ever been insulted? Anybody, anybody talk about you? Did you ever tell anybody, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me? Anybody had a word hurt you? You see, words can hurt. Words can cause scars. Words can go deep and last a lifetime. But you know the great thing about it, Paul says, I'm content in the insults. Oh, Paul was insulted a lot. Paul was thrown in jail. Probably. He was thrown in prison just for preaching. 
that he was insulted. I'm sure they called him names. I'm sure they ridiculed him. Paul says, you see, I'm content in insults. In hardships. We experience a lot of hardships. In persecutions. We may not experience a lot of persecutions the way Paul did. The way missionaries did. Because there's not a lot of times that we have people confronting us and challenging us in our faith. But there may be people who ask us, why do you believe in God? What has He done for you lately? There is no God. I don't, I don't believe in God. If God is so good, why are people so bad? You see, they may challenge our faith and our relationship with God. They may feel like a, a part of persecution. In difficult we've all experienced it. It is a great testimony that Paul is giving to us and, and one that I would really love to be able to say day in and day out is that is, I am content when things are bad. I'm okay when things are bad. I'm at peace when things are bad. But you see, there, the only way we can say what Paul said is if our root is if we're strong enough in our relationship with God. Because if our roots aren't that deep and, and not that strong, and if, and if we fail to read His Word and pray and talk to Him and, and ask Him to make us stronger Christians, if we fail to do those things, what will happen is when difficulties or weakness or insults or hardships or persecutions come, our roots will be pulled out of the ground. And we'll fall in our relationship. And I think God wants us to grow to be strong, chest-pounding, black coffee-drinking Christians who are tough. Not because we want to brag on ourselves, but because God has made us that way. God has toughened us up. I don't know if you've ever thought about it before, but going through hardships, once you get through it, will toughen you in your relationship with God. You will become closer to God and you will depend on Him more and your roots will actually go deeper. So I get it. What Paul says is if I don't ever go through these things, I don't ever have an opportunity for my roots to go deep. And I don't ever have an opportunity for my relationship with God to become strong. So yes, God, while I don't have fun in these things and, and while I don't celebrate in, in hardships, I can at least find comfort and peace in knowing that once you walk with me, once we get through this, I'm going to be a stronger person. Remember what we talked about this morning. We find strength in our passion for God. And when we do this, we do become stronger. And we do become closer to God. When I am weak, then I am strong. I can only imagine that Dr. Gibbs would be proud of the lesson God gave to Paul. Don't take those things away from him, God. They're making him tougher. They're making him stronger. Sort of Dr. Gibbs' theory getting strong and getting big. Some struggles stretch us until we feel we're going to snap. Some struggles we face make us wonder if we're actually going to make it. And my prayer is that when you have these struggles, you can somehow say, God is going to help me learn something from this. God is going to help me learn something this. I was talking to a lady this past week who maybe years ago got news that she was cancer free from breast cancer. And she had it for several years. And we began to talk about her story and, and talk about her journey. And she said, you know, as I look back on it, 
I wouldn't have wanted it any other way. And I kind of stared at her. She said, don't get me wrong. I don't want it to come back. I don't want to have to deal with it again because it wasn't fun. She said, but you got to understand, the lessons I learned through having that will last a lifetime. She said, so I wouldn't want it any other way. As I thought about that, you know, it, it just reminds me, it gives me a picture of someone whose roots are pretty deep when it comes to serving God and having a relationship with God. And I'm sure that's the kind of relationship Dr. Gibbs had with God. It's the kind of relationship Philip Gully wanted his children to have with God. That relationship all developed with God. And my prayer for you tonight is that when the storms come and the winds blow, physically, emotionally, and spiritually, that you'll pray that God will walk through, through that storm with you. That He'll bring you through to the other side. And then when He does, your roots will have gone just a little bit deeper. Pray with me.